Yeah, I shut that off. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, focusing a lot on the hips and the low back today. So find your usual comfortable seat. If you wanna change it up and lie down, especially, you know, summer heat, it might be a little tired. You might feel a little lethargic this afternoon. You can always lie down for centering. We're going to focus on the third chakra today which I'll explain more as we get into it. Um, but just for a reference, it's an energy center right where your rib cage intersects in the center at the very bottom of your rib cage is your solar plexus. And you can imagine a sort of yellow ball of light there. And that is the third chakra that we're going to work on today. And so with that in mind, we're going to actually breathe specifically into that area as we center. So you can place your hand, maybe one or maybe both hands right over your solar plexus, right at the bottom of the ribs where they meet. And I invite you to just take a few deep cleansing breaths just to transition out from daily life into your, onto your mat. We'll inhale, let that belly expand. And then as you exhale, allow all the air to empty out. And we'll take a few more just cleansing breaths, inhaling fully, deeply. And as you exhale, letting all of that go. And so we'll focus our breath now on that solar plexus, that uh, chakra, that third chakra. And imagine you could breathe into this yellow ball of light that's uh, kind of at your solar plexus. And as you breathe into it, the yellow ball of light starts to expand and widen. And then as you exhale, feel the yellow ball of light shrinking back to the center of your solar plexus. So we'll repeat that a few more times. Inhale, that yellow ball of light expands throughout your torso. And as you exhale, that yellow ball of light travels back to the center of your solar plexus. We'll take five more breaths, focusing on that third chakra. Take one more breath, inhale, yellow ball of light, it expands. And exhale, watch it travel back to the center. And stay, stay with that breath and just start to observe that this is an energy center that's also associated with the fire elements. So you can think of digestive fire or like a little flame uh, under your hands. And as you breathe into that little flame, or that ball of light, you're stoking that fire. And it's sort of burning off whatever uh, no longer serves you, right? So tension that we might hold in our belly or in our, our torso, you can kind of let that yellow light kind of infuse into those areas. All right, so with that in mind, we'll go ahead and uh, let's wake up the third chakra even more, and we're going to do a Sufi grind. So if you're lying down, you're going to come and sit up. And I would recommend sitting on, um, if you're going to sit on a prop, don't sit on anything bulky. Sit on a, like a lower prop, if at all. We're going to have a cross-legged seat. And we'll take our hands to our knees, and we're going to start to stir our rib cage around in a circle. So you'll lean over to one side and then uh, sort of shift to the front of your sitting bones, stretch your heart up to the sky and then over to the other side, and then round your spine to the back of the mat and then over to one side. And you'll continue to move in a big circle. And so we're stimulating the solar plexus uh, chakra here as well. 
just kind of stirring up energy. So as we know, our energy centers can have an excess of energy, too much energy, or can be deficient in energy. And today we're just focusing on this energy center and just by giving it some attention, just trusting that that can help to balance it, whatever is needed. Also, this chakra that we're working on today is associated with um, self-esteem and worthiness and, um, and the kind of a personal power is the third chakra. So those are some other uh, reasons to focus on this area. Let's take one more circle this way and then you'll reverse. It's actually probably my favorite chakra. Out of the seven major ones, because it's, um, it's a very fiery one. And inhale forward, exhale rounding back. Let's do four more of these Sufi grinds. Stirring up that energy. All right, last two. And last one, and then we'll come back to center. All right, we are gonna lie down now. And you might use a prop to pad your legs for a spinal twist. So I happen to have a big prop here. If any prop will work. Bulkier is nice though. So you'll lie on your back and you can have a prop under your head like a pillow. And we're gonna stoke the fire before we let it all mellow. And I'll explain. Uh, once we lie down. So just take a moment and feel the ground beneath you. Notice the parts of you that are pressing into the floor. Notice the other parts of you that are curving away from the floor naturally. See if you can sink your body a little heavier into the ground so the parts of you that curve away from the floor lessen. And then we'll open our arms out like uh, the letter T along the floor. And we'll pick up our shins so they're in tabletop. We'll squeeze our legs together. So we are gonna stoke the fire, do a little bit of uh, kind of active yang at first before we really sink into our yin. So we're gonna let both legs fall to the right and hover off the ground. You'll start to feel your abdominals wake up and then you bring your legs back up to center. And you'll do this side to side, letting the knees fall to one side and then exhale back up. Back and forth, knees hover and then back up. And we'll just do this, let's do four more sets. Really waking up that fire in our belly. Do two more and the shoulders might start to crawl up by your ears. Can you lay them flat on your back so they're, the neck feels long? One more each side. And then the next time your knees fall to the right, this is where you might employ a prop. We're going to come into our spinal twist. And you can certainly um, do this without a prop and just lay your legs flat on the floor. Arms will open wide, you can gaze to the left or any direction that feels good on your neck. We'll lay here for just a moment and start to check in with that solar plexus and breathing life there. Inhale, yellow light expands. And exhale, yellow light relaxes. You want to take an affirmation. Um, a lot of this work is associated with, um, well, affirmation. So worthiness is one associated with the ch this third chakra. So you could say to yourself silently, I am worthy. I am worthy. I am worthy. 
We'll be here for about a minute. So if you need to adjust something in this pose, if it feels a little too uh, crunchy on the shoulders or low back, please grab a prop under your legs. Otherwise, we'll be here for a little bit longer. We'll take one more breath here. And then as you exhale, you can uh, travel your body back to the center of your mat, however you like. Legs can be long, your knees can be bent. Just take a moment to pause and observe. Observe what's happening in real time inside. And connecting to your third chakra at the solar plexus, feeling what might be happening if any sensation arises, just noticing that. And then we'll do it all again on the other side. So if you use that prop for your first side, pick it up, move it off your mat to the left slightly. And then we are going to start with that active core engagement. Um, sometimes it's, it makes it really clear if we engage our body clear, like firmly, and it makes it really simple and easy to disengage, right? So we'll, that's why we're kind of approaching our work today with a little more yang. <laughs> you'll open the arms wide and uh, bring your legs up to tabletop. And then you'll let your legs fall to one side and then bring it back up and over to the other side and back up. Just to really feel that point of birth, like, you know, pleasant sensation in your obliques. <laughs> over to one side and up. You might inhale, knees drop to the side, exhale, legs lift up. Inhale, exhale. Let's do a couple more each side. One more to the right. And one more to the left. And then you'll just slowly lower the legs all the way down to the left. You might have to readjust your props behind your legs or your head in order to feel real, like you can relax here. Gaze to the right. We'll be here for a little bit. You might hold your knees with your left hand for a little extra support. Just start to let your belly go, let your belly soften, let your jaw relax. And then again, if you want to do an affirmation here, I'll just kind of offer a slightly different one every time and you can take it or leave it. But another affirmation you could use is I believe in myself, I have my own personal power, I am powerful. So let me say that again, I believe in myself and I am powerful. That could be an affirmation you say silently to yourself three times. I believe in myself and I am powerful.
We'll be here for 10 more breaths. I'll just let you be in your own experience for this remainder of time. We'll take one more breath here. And then as you exhale, you'll return to your back and pause once more. Check in with yourself. Notice your current condition. Notice how you feel. How are your emotions, your mood? How's your mind? Is it busy or is it still? How's your body? We'll fold our knees in and we're just going to briefly do a little apanasana next. So you'll take your palms and cup each kneecap uh, with each palm. And then let your knees fall away from you. Arms will straighten. Inhale here. And as you exhale, bend your elbows wide, draw your knees into your chest. And we'll continue that inhale, knees away, arms straight. Exhale, bend the elbows wide, knees fall into the chest. And we'll continue that. See if you can disengage your hip flexors or your legs and hips and let it all be, um, all the movement happen from your arms and your arms only. See how that feels. Is that possible today? And after a few of these going front and back, you might start to open your knees wide apart, make leg circles here, uh, like a little frog swimming. Inhale, knees tilt away. Exhale, knees draw in and together. Take three more circles before we change the direction. And even here, the legs might want to help the movement. Can your legs become completely relaxed, completely passive, and the arms move the legs? And then reverse your circle, knees in and then wide apart away and together and back in. So everything we've done so far is actually really good to do first thing in the morning for digestion. The Sufi grind, the spinal twist, and then this, uh, this is called um, Apanasana, wind releasing pose is the translation. So yeah, so put those kind of in your toolbox if you need, hug your knees in and rock along your low back. And then we'll roll to the side and come on up. And we're going to lie on our belly next. We're going to do a little bit of a back bend, a little bit of a supported back bend. And um, you might open up a blanket uh, for padding, maybe for your hip bones if you're on a hard surface, or maybe you'll be fine without it. I'm just going to open mine up a little bit, just a little bit of cushion. All right, so you're gonna to come to your belly. And we'll take our legs long and we'll start by lying all the way down on the ground. You can rest your head on your arms. And start to relax your belly into the floor on purpose. If you can breathe down into your belly as deeply as you can, we'll take three big belly breaths here. Inhale. And then exhale all the air out. Twice more. Inhale, maybe a little slower and deeper than before. And exhale. 
One more time, inhale fully. Going even further in that in inhale than previously. Keep inhaling, 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 inhaling. And then exhale, let it all go. So you might actually just stay as you are and do big, deep belly, bre belly breaths, especially if it feels really good right now and that's just where you want to, you don't want to move. <laughs> And if you have any low back stuff going on, you might just stick with where we're at right now. But otherwise, if you feel like you are up for an adventure, we'll come to our forearms, which we've done before, but we'll kind of play with also flexing the feet so the soles of the feet are up to the ceiling here. So you can either point or flex, it doesn't really matter. But so this is uh, somewhat similar to a pose called bow pose, where you would reach back and hold your ankles. But we're, instead of doing that, we're propping ourselves up on our elbows. So this is a little bit more active. The arms are pressing down and engaged. The feet are flexed. And all that's engaged, but your belly is disengaged. So we're letting the breath move down into the belly once more. So you might notice some compression in your low back. That's actually what we're going for. It is healthy to have some compression here from time to time. If it's too much compression, you can walk your elbows a little bit more in front of you to reduce that intensity. We'll be here for about a minute. Feel free to stay here this whole time or maybe part of the time. And you can repeat one of those mantras if you like the I am worthy, I am enough, I am whole. Saying that to yourself again, I am worthy, I am enough, I am whole three times to yourself. Take one more breath here, and then we'll let it all go. You can extend your legs and lower your torso all the way down, head down. Just feel what is happening as we come out of the pose. Where is there sensation? We are going to open the front of our shoulder and chest. And then we'll open our sides and it'll all lead up to a bigger pose. Um, this will support a bigger pose that we're about to do. So we're going to start with opening our left arm directly out to the side, left palm on the floor at the height of your shoulder. You're all the way down on your belly and your right hand will press alongside you on the floor as you roll to the left. This is called wishbone pose. We'll stack the legs and you'll just gently push the whole time those right fingertips into the floor to help encourage you roll back. You're welcome to put a prop under your head. You can also crawl your fingertips further back away from you to open more in the front of the shoulder. We'll stay here.
take one more breath here. And then as you exhale, return to your belly and uh, we'll do the second side. So you'll open your left arm out to the left for the second side. Take your right arm, sorry, right arm out to the side. And then the left hand, you'll press into your left hand and roll back, roll to your right. So essentially you're opening up, you're rolling on that right shoulder. And that's, you can feel a, a stretch in your pec and shoulder. You can also crawl your right arm further away from you to get a little more stretch. But keeping the head, disen the neck disengaged, the head heavy on the floor or a prop is key here. We don't want to grip our neck muscles while we're here. Take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, return to your belly and just pause, feel your belly present against the belly of the earth. And then we'll, just with care and, and a slowness to our transition, take your hands under your shoulders and press yourself up to hands and knees. I'm just gonna do a brief counter pose before we get back into more again. Just a, a moment of child's pose. You'll take your big toes to touch. Knees will be about as wide as your mat. You can hold in for a moment. Just take a pause. We'll take five deep breaths in child's pose. Ready to come up, and we're going to revisit um, a little bit like that sphinx, sphinx pose we just did, but it's going to be a side sphinx. And there's a two versions that you can play with today. There's like a really gentle version and a deeper version because we want to open our sides quite a bit because we're going to come into a big heart opener uh, after this, and it's essential to have open sides. It just makes a back bend easier to do. So you'll come onto one forearm and you'll take your legs long in line with um, your whole head and spine. So I like to line up my whole body against the back edge of the mat. That gives it a, a really good visual reference. So you can have your elbow lined up, hip and legs lined up. And then this could be where you stay. What we're going for is a side opener. So the bottom waist, the bottom ribs. Now you could really press down into your arm and make this very active. So my arm is working, my shoulders on my back. That's one way to do this. The other way to do it is the passive way, which I think gives you more stretch. You'll actually let your shoulders shrug up by your ear. You might feel that band of fascia, that outer uh, waist, you might start to feel it stretch. So you could try that on, active or not active. And then there's actually a third way, which is um, gonna be a bit deeper, a bit bigger. And you'll come up onto your palm instead of your elbow. 
And then the other hand will just be here to go up like kind of a kickstand. And then you will hike your shoulder up quite a bit. Although, you know, you could do both ways. You could do active or kind of hike your shoulder. But we want to feel that deep side stretch. So that's what we're looking for in all these different variations. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize how tight I was here. So we just did this. So like before, we are belly breathing, uh, just like kind of adjacent, like you're breathing into your uh, belly. Uh, like in my case, it'll be my right belly because I'm stretching my right side, right? You can continue to think of that third chakra even here. And I like to think of the third chakra as like, part of processing, processing food, you know, processing digestion, but, you know, just processing, processing everything. And uh, so as we, what I love about yin is it helps us process emotion, thoughts, everything. And so as you breathe here, just kind of noticing what, what you might want to process and you can sense that. Be here for 10 more breaths. Go ahead and come up and just, if you're already on your hand, you can come up and have a seat. If you're on your forearms, you can come up and just kind of have a seat as well. And just check in with the two waists, the two halves of your body, noticing what shifted just now. And then we'll do it all again on the other side, but we'll start low and then you'll have the option to get a little higher off the floor if you choose. So we're going to lie on our side yet again. And you can line up your whole body in one long line against the back edge of your mat. So it's actually it can feel a little balancey. Um, just I invite you to just play with that. Your elbow will go just under your shoulder line, maybe an inch further up on your mat from your shoulder line. And you can either keep your arm active or passive here, feeling that side stretch. If you're not feeling enough of a side stretch, you can lean back or lean forward. I think leaning back makes it a little easier to feel. And, or you can come up onto your hand instead of your elbow. And so I like to have my hand, instead of directly, my wrist directly under my shoulder, I like to have it a little bit higher up my mat. So then you can kind of sink your waist into this pose a little bit more efficiently. And your other hand will just be there to help. Again, that's the whole point of this is to feel that side stretch. So find whatever version works for you, shoulder shrug or not. We'll be here for about 10 more breaths. And letting your breath move into the little crevices, the nooks and crannies that feel pent up and tight and congested, letting your breath move into those spots. Maybe that yellow golden light is moving into those spots. Be here for about five more breaths.
All right, we'll sit up one more time and check in with ourselves. Maybe circle that wrist. Feel like, <laughs> like you got a lot of pressure. Just notice how your waist feels right and left. And then before we get into our next pose, let's do something to prime us for that seated. You'll take your arms up and you'll reach your arms. So the arms are straight. Think of the Y and YMCA. And you're going to stretch your arms back behind you like you could touch the wall behind you. You might actually literally touch the wall. And then you'll go back down. So we're making really big circles with our fingertips in the room. And then it's okay if your shoulders lift up a little bit, but we want to sit up tall and reach our arms wide and back, opening through the chest to the belly here. Yeah. So playing with that, you might even just point your first finger and let that be the uh, pencil lead in which you're drawing the circles just to kind of make it a little clearer here, kind of finding that reach. Yeah. And we'll do that two more times. And so when you feel, feel sticky or stuck in your shoulders, go slow and gradual and work through that sticky stuck place uh, in, within your circle. So one more like this. Reaching back. And then after your fingers touch down to the floor, you can just kind of shake it out. Okay, so we are going to be kneeling next. So you can take a blanket and just set it out. And we'll come to our elbows, knees and elbows. And then we're going to do a little cat cow on our elbows and knees, which is a little limiting because um, we're so low to the ground, but it'll help us uh, find the appropriate spinal uh, shape we want to stay in. So first, round your spine like a cat, chin to chest, try to bring your, kind of push your hips towards your head here. And then do the opposite, lift your eyes, lift your tail, look at the front of your mat if you're on one, and again, rounding and drawing your chin to your chest. And then reversing, lifting the tail and heart. One more like this, rounding. And then finding that back. But now we're gonna stay in sort of this back bend, this cow pose, in other words. And you're going to start to walk your forearms one at a time a bit more and more forward to the front of your uh, mat to melt your heart down. This is called heart to earth pose. You can lower your forehead to the floor or have your chin on the floor. If Nothing's on the floor and it feels really intense to be here. Just know that this is a really intense pose. Grab some sort of prop and slide it under your heart so your heart has something to ground into. Okay. Also, you can check in with your shoulders. If your arms, your shoulders feel really tense here, make sure your hands are about as wide as your mat or at least your shoulder height, that's going to help take some of the pressure off your shoulders. We're going to hang out here for about 10 or so breaths. So you do have time to get into position and then kind of marinate. And again, you can think of your third chakra, that golden light at the bottom of your ribs, breathing into that spot over and over. You can repeat the mantra, I am center, I am center three times.
we'll come out of this pose. You could come back up to hands and knees. You could lie on your belly. You could child's pose, whatever you need to do to reset before we move on. Take time to do that. We're gonna come into our pigeon pose next. So I do recommend finding a prop if you like a prop. Um, bigger, bulkier props for your to torso. Smaller but bulky, tall prop for your glute if you want. So I'm gonna use this bolster just because it's so inviting right now. Like, use that. And then uh, we'll stay on our hands and knees. And we'll start with our right knee forward, just behind your wrist. And then sweep your right foot across your mat. And then we'll start to crawl the left leg way far to the back of the mat. So the thing about pigeon is it's more about your two frontal hip bones level and pointing straight ahead with the wall you're facing. We don't wanna lean over to one sitting bone or lean over to the other. We wanna keep those frontal hip bones in one plane. And so you might put a prop under your right glute if that helps you. Otherwise, you might be fine just kind of letting that float. And if you want to take a prop under your torso, you can and pull. It could, if it's smaller, it could just go under your ribs or under your forehead. You can also rest your forearms on the ground and just kind of hold yourself there as well. You can always take number four stretch on your back instead of this pose. We're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. So listen to your knees. If your knees are cranky here, lie on your back and take number four stretch instead. We are about halfway there. We got one more minute to go. You're welcome to come out of this pose early if you like. You're welcome to focus in on that third chakra once more, breathe some life into it. on your back you can unwind your legs and just pause there if you're in that pigeon you'll press yourself up with your arms and then you can roll over to one side maybe lie on your back or lie on your belly or just sit up lean back whatever pause moment you need to regroup before we go to the other side 
Ah. ah, pigeon, it's one that I, you, know, you don't realize you need till you do it, or you don't realize the level of tension until you do it, I think. All right, so if you're lying on your back, go ahead and gather your knees into your chest and then roll to the side. We're gonna come up to hands and knees. Uh, if you're doing number four on your back though, you'll just stay on your back and take your left ankle on top of your right thigh. Otherwise, we're going to revisit pigeon on the left leg forward this time. So hands and knees, you'll slide your left knee just behind your left wrist and then draw your left foot across your mat. So your shin is kind of in a diagonal across your mat. And we'll crawl our right leg far back. And then however you want to prop yourself, it could be the same way on the first side or you can change it up a little bit as needed. We'll find our way. The main thing we want to keep in mind also is our upper body is relaxed. Our shoulders are happy here. Just want to melt into the pose. Full surrender. We have about one more minute here. Listen to what your body needs here. What, what are the wise words it has to say? Is it wise to be here another minute or is it wise to lie on your back and rest? our way out of this pose and we actually are all going to line our backs now so um, you can go ahead and actually as you're regrouping and making your way onto your back if there's any way you want to prop yourself for shavasana you can i'm going to lead us through a little bit of breath work on our back before we shavasana so if you want to take a prop behind your knees, especially if you have a tender low back today, please take time to do that. A prop under your head for your, any neck or shoulder tension is a good idea. So we're going to come back to that first breath uh, awareness we took this uh, the beginning of our class where we rested the hand at the solar plexus, right where the rib cage meet at the bottom. You're going to rest your hands there. We're going to revisit that third chakra. Inhale, golden yellow light expands outward. 
Exhale, that golden light travels back to the center of your solar plexus. You're gonna continue that five more breaths on your own. Inhale, golden light expands. Exhale, golden light contracts. Inhale, golden yellow light. Exhale, golden yellow light. So you've completed that last exhale. We're gonna let all breath practicing go, all focus go, and just enjoy this moment, short moments of rest here. Organizing your shoulder blades behind your back, letting your palms face the sky, letting that belly, that third chakra, just start to soften. Shavasana. Start to deepen your breath again, allowing your breath to move you back into this room, back into your body. You can start to find whatever movements make sense in re-emerging, still honoring your rested state, but also we're transitioning to seated in the next few moments. So as you're ready, at your pace, you'll uh, take a few moments to gather yourself back to your seat. Yeah. And as you sit again, just take a moment and recognize your solar plexus chakra, that third chakra. And what I love about this well, the practice of yoga, but the energy, working on the energy centers is there's a whole world inside of you, right? And um, it's kind of fun to access that, right? And today we focused on accessing the worthiness, the kind of balancing our centeredness, self-esteem, all that good stuff, personal power. It's always there, right? We'll bring our hands together at our heart. And bow the thinking mind to the caring heart. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me.